Hey everyone, welcome, welcome back here to my channel where I play Planet Zoo. My name is Nissa and today we are gonna build this for the Prisvalski's wild horse and the Bacterial Camel. And as you can see, I also split it up. So I have a smaller habitat and a bigger one. So if we need to split anyone apart, anyone have a rough birth or anything like that, they can get out of the herd without actually needing to be alone because they can still like touch each other and stuff. Uh, so I thought that was a real nice touch. I am, however, aware that the both the bacterial camel and the uh, horse, of course, are able to jump this fence. It isn't high enough. However, I have escape turned off, so it's only inside of the habitat they jump over the fence. Um, I chose to lean into it, and you will see it in the cinematic. So, um, yeah, please keep watching if you want to see that. Okay, guys, I know I actually did make a habitat, not like this habitat, but for the same animals uh, in my last zoo, Future Life Asia. However, that was a very, very different build. So if you want to see something completely different than this, then you can see that. Um, I still think this is worth seeing. I'm happy about this habitat. However, if I had like a few days more to build it, it may have looked a little different, but I still like the outcome with the time I actually had. But this is the last habitat in Pla uh, in Plan Zoo. No, it's the last habitat in New Bayer Zoo. Therefore, I'm totally ready this Saturday, which will be tomorrow. Yes, this video go up tomorrow Friday. So yeah, yeah. When this video go out, it will be tomorrow um, at 2 p.m. A Danish time and the live stream should be up so you can see which time it is wherever you live um yeah I just can't mention every for every single time zone and I'm not even sure which time zone I'm living in so that's a little confusing however I will say I will focus on the animals a little different than I did in my last uh, ha habitat for the Pesvilski's uh, horse and the bacterial camel Last time I focused very, very much on the Preswalski's horse because it was right after the, um, what's it called, the uh, conservation pack came out. So the Preswalski's horse were the new big thing. Today I'm going to focus on both of the animals so you will get much more information about the Vectral Camel. And I will focus more on them because, uh, in a way where I will try to figure out why they actually do have interspecies enrichment because it's not enough that the animals actually just live the same place again a fox and a squirrel can live the same place that doesn't mean they should have interspecies inter uh, enrichment uh, even though i'm pretty sure the fox would be very happy about it and my first clue actually comes in the name and uh, yeah the, yeah, Preswalski's horse and Bacterial Camel, it doesn't sound much the same. However, uh, when I look at the other names they have, the Bacterial Camel are also called the Mongolian Camel. And this Preswalski's horse is also called the Mongolian Wild Horse. So there's something about Mongolia uh, in between here. Uh, however, this Preswalski's Wild Horse also have uh, other names such as Tak or Taki, uh, Dungarian Horse, uh, and so on. Um, they, of course, also have a few features that can remind you of each other. Uh, here, the color for once. I know both of them can vary a little in color, but they go both go in this sandy tan color scheme. They also both are uh, strong animals that will be able to uh, carry both people and baggage. Uh, and they can both survive in really harsh uh, environments. And they are both from Central Asia. And this Preswalski's wild horse lives in Mongolia, sorry, Mongolia, which we just mentioned, and China, uh, which the name, the country specifically doesn't say here for the bacterial camel, but they do both live in the bio, biogeographical realm called Pale Arctic. 
pale arctic doesn't mean like arctic arctic um but it is a area as far as i know in the middle area of asia that sometimes can be cold but for some of the years also are very like deserty and rough the presvalsi uh, wild horse live in the temperate climate zones in uh, the grassland biome where the bacterial camel lives a few different uh, places where they both live in the temperate and arid climate zones the arid is a little more density if you don't know uh, and for biomes they also have the grassland lies the Preswalski's wild horse but also the dunes mountains and rocky areas so according to this it seems like the bacterial camel are a little more agile in the rougher areas both the Preswalski's horse and the bacterial camel lives in other harems or bachelor groups. For the Prosvalski's horse, these uh, normally consist of about 10 to 20 individuals. The harem harems will normally have one male and then all of his wives and this uh, offspring they are all. One of the reasons why the bacterial camel are much more adept to many more climates is because first of all they have this fur that is both built for freezing cold and really hot desserts and they are just more built to keep temperature out than actually uh, keep specifically warm or cold at the same time they can store food and water for a lot of time and actually drink up to 57 liters uh, at once when they are well fed and have much to drink and such, they have uh, what's the com called uh, their um, humps uh, will actually be very plump and kind of um, not jelly, but but they will be very erect, like look like a well stuffed teddy bear, basically. And when food runs scarce, when they have been wandering around for a long time, when it's cold, there's nothing to eat or they can't get enough to drink in the desert or something like that, the humps will simply sh uh, not shrink, but they will be more like emptying and more like if you remember that stupid teddy bear your uncle gave you that was really raggy and wasn't really stuffed at all. <laughs> Sorry, it's the best comparisons I could come up with. Uh, and sometimes they can even start to hang to the side on the animal. So if you come to a zoo and you see the humps dang dangling to the side, it means that they aren't full of energy and water. However, keep in mind that the ones we see in zoos do not <laughs> need the same amount because that storing technique is only so you have enough for your starving season if you don't have a starving pe period or season then you don't need to fill up all of your reserves that's just like if you have bears that don't go into hibernation they don't need to eat as much before the uh, the winter comes as bears that do hibernate they are also able to walk faster than most four-legged animals because they've used this technique where they use the front lift and the uh, back lift leg on the same time where most animals uh, you can see most animals you have seen in real life will normally do like opposite so it's lift front right back at the same time but instead of that they use like same size so lift follows lift and right follows light right and that actually allows the animal to move faster however this are they only able to do because they are able to really uh, hold the balance on the two legs on the same side which can be very very difficult for a lot of animals and a lot of horses aren't able to do this i know some like the icelander uh horse which is one of my favorites uh <laughs> are able to or some of them are able to learn it i don't think they naturally do it but you are able to teach them that 
and they actually have world uh, championship in it every, every year i think it is on iceland and it's kind of funny to see however this way of walking is just a way to walk faster it isn't running and sometimes the backtrail camel will have to run and they can run up to 64 kilometers per hour However, this Perswalski's wild horse, may, while it may not be able to walk as fast as the backdoor camel, it can run up to 69 kilometers per hour, so it can run 5 kilometers faster, which can be a reason to survive or a cause for survival in the wild. Today, I think the backdoor camel are most famous. Uh, for its lives in captivity and not in the wild. However, this Perswalski's wild horse is more known to be the last truly wild horse in the wild. I will say though, it's not the only wild horse out there. Uh, here in Denmark, we have some that have been released uh, horse generations ago. I think it's 50 years or so ago. I'm not sure about that. I haven't checked up on it. Um, and this have allowed uh, uh, horses to become wild that uh, initially wasn't. So it isn't like a wild species, but it simply was different horses being released to both help the that biodiversity grow in the area, but also to actually keep up with removing um what's it called uh, weeds and so in a natural area uh, where you don't want big machinery in there to do so anyway you know i get really fast tracked and we try to get back here today the persvelski's wild horse is sadly endangered but it seems like now it's going uh, a better direction However, the petrol camel is actually a whole another story according to the IUCN red list. Since they are uh, with the category NE, meaning ne uh, not evaluated, which means they don't even have a spot on the IUCN red list. However, their numbers are very, very high. Um, and it is estimated to be above 1 million. So luckily for once, we have an animal here that thrives.
Okay, guys, that's all I got for you today. This was the last habitat in here. So tomorrow, 2 p.m. Danish time, I will go live here on my channel. And I really hope you're going to join me. Uh, if you don't have the time or simply don't want to see it at that time, don't you worry. It will be up afterwards. But if you want to be a part of it, if you want to ask questions or anything like that, uh, 2 p.m. tomorrow it is already up on my channel so you should be able to go in there and see which time it is in your country i know this time doesn't accommodate every single country out there uh, but that would literally be impossible to find a time that would do uh, and this is the time i normally go live on my second channel so it's to fit my needs uh, sorry about that Anyway, guys, you know the drill. Like, subscribe, and turn on the bell notification so you know the next time I upload a video. Really hope to see you again. Other than the comments below or in the next video. Bye, guys.